What's up, y'all? May 2020. Here we still sit in the midst of a certain pandemic. COVID-19! 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 And I wanted to discuss three movies that are pretty objectively bad, or that got lambasted by the critics or whatever, but that have such charismatic villains that the villains basically save the entire movies. hit the ground running here, don't we? <laughs> Look, I know that this movie sucks ass, okay? I know. I know. But that doesn't stop me from thoroughly enjoying watching it on occasion. If you've ever eaten in a McDonald's, then you know what I'm talking about. Now, this is the first movie on the list here. The first of several, where most of the entertainment value comes from the movie's main antagonist, our antagonist in Street Fighter is M. Bison, played by the ever-charismatic Raul Julia. Oh, Raul Julia. For I beheld Satan as he fell from heaven like lightning! The world lost a treasure the day that you died. M. Bison also happens to be my favorite character to play Street Fighter 2 as. And yes, in case you're curious, I would stomp your ass into the ground with him. Spam Hadoukens against me all you want. Raul Julia is terrific, and he's probably the only redeeming quality about this movie. Why do I like watching it? The nostalgia fallacy. It reminds me of playing Street Fighter as a kid, and of being a kid in general. I was 10 when this movie came out. Also, there's a decent level of camp. For example, the poison gas scene... And the scene where DJ corrects Zangief's sideways thumbs up. And of course, Jean-Claude Van Damme's captivating, <laughs> riveting speech when the evil British guy comes and tells him that his operation against Bison is getting shut down. Well, I'm not going home. I'm going to get on my boat and I'm going to kick that son of a bitch Bison's ass so hard that the next Bison wannabe... He's gonna feel it. And who wants to go with me? Just riveting. Riveting. Don't forget that Raul Julia was in this. I was torn between this movie and the other Norm MacDonald movie, Dirty Work. But I ultimately like watching this one better, so here it is. This movie is ranked low, a 5.8, for a reason. It's retarded. One might say that the plot for this movie is completely... Screwed. <laughs> that said, the characters and performances make the movie entertaining regardless of its empty, vapid, stupid fucking plot. Like Street Fighter, the main antagonist absolutely steals the show. And in this case, it's the bitchy, horrible Miss Croc, played by Elaine Stritch. She is hilarious. Fucking hilarious in this movie. Maintaining an over-the-top level of cruelty towards basically everyone. I'll show you compassion. Get your asses off my property! I'm afraid you didn't hear me. I'm afraid you didn't hear me! Particularly Norm MacDonald's character, Willard. Willard Fillmore. Almost everything she says in this movie makes me howl with laughter. Even after I've seen it a dozen times and I know what she's going to say, I still think it is so funny. You know, as a matter of fact, all of the characters except for one really deliver here. You've got Danny DeVito, who actually admitted to doing this movie just for the paycheck. I guess he had a yacht or a rare comic book or some shit to pay off. Daniel Benzali, Dave Chappelle for the most part. Sherman Hemsley. And even the minor characters like Mark Atchison as the pawn shop owner. Oh, he's ugly. Real ugly. And Lorena Gale is the angry mom of the kid that assaults Norm MacDonald in the park. They all just straight up kill it. It's so funny. 
So who's the character who didn't fit? Who's the one that I have a gripe against? Sarah Silverman is Hillary, Norm MacDonald's love interest. Sarah Silverman. Look, I don't have a problem with Sarah Silverman in general, but I really feel like they got the script finished and, like, most of the movie filmed when the writers were like, uh, we don't have a love interest. We don't have a young, pretty female to play a forced, completely unnecessary love interest for Norm MacDonald. We don't? That's bu 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 bullshit We better shoehorn one in, and it better be written, cast, and filmed in under 25 minutes. That's really how her character felt to me. She didn't need to be there. If I worked for that shouter slut, I'd tell her to get down, get busy on my man. In Waterworld, Dennis Hopper's portrayal of the Deacon is worth the watch alone. Maybe he doesn't answer the Chuck Charles! Charles! He is so much fun. Unlike Kevin Costner's boring, spart sniffingly smug portrayal of the Mariner, what should have been a cool character and a character that I'm sure looked really great on paper. The little girl Enola, the tattoo on her back, played by the little girl from Andre, also annoys the bejesus out of me. But I'll be damned if Gene Triplehorn didn't look wonderful in this movie oh my goodness she kind of annoyed me too though sometimes the presentation of a barren earth as covered in water instead of as a desert or a nuclear wasteland is in my opinion creative and interesting after all water is almost always associated with bringing life not death and desolation the surviving human population are huddled into makeshift islands called atolls where they have no guarantee of basic human needs like hygiene, fresh food and water, or even a literal ground to stand on. Furthermore, these poor desperate souls are constantly tormented by pirates called smokers who are armed to the teeth with machine guns and shit, have the ability to refine oil into fuel have a seemingly unlimited supply of cigarettes and spam or smeat in this movie, and who I bet smell really, really bad. Waterworld suffers from the faulty premise problem. I've touched on this in Cobra Kai and a couple of other reviews. If the polar ice caps both melted, the entire Earth would not be completely flooded. Don't misunderstand me here. It'd be bad. Real, 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 real bad. But there would still be huge tracts of land as in most of it, still left above the surface. All of this shit said, Dennis Hopper's performance as the Deacon is enough for me to suspend my disbelief. It does look like shit. And it feels like cold shit. Deacon? Okay, that's it. Three brief reviews of three movies. I hope you enjoyed the reviews. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. But don't be a dick. And I will see you next time. Stay safe. Take it easy.